What would you do if you have the superpower of invisibility? The first thing this boy does is to take revenge on the kids who bullied him. Then he walked into the locker room and watches girls changing clothes. His name is Michael, and his mom is a respected prosecutor. However, he is still bullied all the time because he doesn't have a father. Michael's day has been rough. His teacher took away his phone because he was caught using it in class. And when the class is finally over, he is harassed by the school bullies, Ivan and Brando. They not only took his allowance, but also shoot him with paintball and made him a joke in front of the school. He was going to use the money to get the Spider-Man's costume for the school's Halloween party. But now all he has left is his very little savings, and he can only afford cheap costumes. However, that isn't the worst thing happens on him today. At the party, Michael's unique costume catches his crush, Stella's attention. But he never expects that Ivan and Brando would sneak into the teacher's office and steal his phone. Ivan and Brando played the clips of Stella from his phone in front of everyone. Michael feels desperate. He yelled with anger and embarrassment that he wished he was invisible. A bolt of lightning struck him, as if the god heard his request. Magically, when Michael wakes up the second morning, he becomes invisible. He quickly accepts this fact and goes to school. Looking at Ivan, who is sitting by the door, he has an idea. Michael walks into the classroom. He takes Ivan's paintball gun and shoots it to the board. The paint blow up and splashes the teacher's face, and the teacher is pissed off by the owner of the gun, Ivan. Then Michael arrives at the tennis course. He interferes Brando's game and watches him getting yelled by his father. After his revenge, Michael walks into the girls' locker room. The pretty girls and their bodies make him feel dizzy. He thinks this must be what Wonderland looks like, but suddenly, his power is gone. When Michael's mom finds out what happened, although she is disappointed to her son, she doesn't want to blame him too much. Just then, she gets a phone call of someone reporting a missing boy, and the boy is Brando. In order to appease the emotions of the students, the school hired a psychologist. But at this time, Michael becomes invisible again. He has to run back home so no one will find out. Just when Michael is worried about his unstable superpower, his mom is back. Of course, she can't see him, and she doesn't know Michael what's sitting right in front of her when she tells the secret of her son. Michael is adopted. The shocking truth makes him overwhelmed. Michael leaves home and goes to the swing by the beach, and he sees Stella. The smart girl quickly realizes that there's an invisible boy of the swaying swing. She doesn't feel scared. But Michael doesn't dare to tell her who he is, so he draws a smiling face on the ground as his mark. They become friend. The second day, Michael goes to Stella's house and hangs out with her. Stella gradually comes closer to Michael. His heart is beating like a drum, but his power starts fading again. Michael has to leave her house in a hurry. After struggling all night, Michael decides to confess his love to Stella. But when he arrives to the gym, he finds that Stella is kidnapped. Michael is too weak to fight a grown man. Stella was taken by the kidnapper. Michael feels guilty, and he goes to the beach. Over there, he meets a blind guy named Bander, and he is actually Michael's father. Turns out many years ago, there was a terrible nuclear disaster. Some people passed away because of the radiation, but some had genetic mutations and gained superpower. And they are called the Deviants. This had caught the attention of a military group called the Insurgent, they arrest the Deviants and do experiment on them, and Ander was one of the people they caught. He was the only one that has mind-reading power, so he was their favorite experiment. However, he used his power too many times that it affected his body badly, and Ander's eyesight got weaker. Except for Ander and his wife Alina, none of the other Deviants have fertility. Alina sacrificed herself to protect her family. Ander had to give Michael away to the prosecutor so that he would be safe, because he read the prosecutor's mind and knew that, she would love him like her own son. Andrew gives Michael a suit made with special material of the suit. Michael doesn't need to walk around naked. Later, mom finds Michael and the psychologist the school hired comes with her. When they arrive home, Michael accidentally discovers the bandage on the psychologist's wrist. The night when he saw the kidnapper, Michael's dog bit the kidnapper's wrist. Michael immediately realized that the psychologist is the kidnapper. But Michael's power is too unstable, so he can't get rid of the psychologist's chase. Just then he runs into Ivan, and Ivan helps him to escape. After they arrive to a safe place, Michael explains everything to Ivan. The two boys who used to treat each other like enemies are now partner, and they will work together to get their friends. At the same time, Stella is locked up in a room full of superpower people. And in that room, she finds the missing Brando and another kid named Martino. With their help, Stella escapes through the window. Using her gymnastics talent, she successfully climbs to the tower, and uses the searchlight to send out a smiley face pattern. 
which is a secret that only she and Michael know. And Michael sees the smiling face, him and Ivan finds the cell, where their friends are locked up. Just around the same time, Stella is spotted by the patrol team and is locked up again. Ivan shoots a paintball and causes the alarm, and Michael sneaks into the splits of base camp. He finds Stella in another cell and helps everyone to escape. This time, he tells her the truth about him. Just when they are about to leave, Stella tells Michael that she saw an elderly as trap here and she wants to go save him. So Michael tells Brando and Ivan to leave first, and he will go find that old man with Stella. But they were set up. That old man is not a prisoner in here. He is the man behind the kidnapping, Claw. Claw has the ability of mind control, he can turn people into his puppets when he touches them. And he already turns Stella and the psychologist. And he also tells Michael that his biological mother is still alive. She was injured when she escaped with Ander, but she survived. Although for Michael, his only mother is his foster mother, the prosecutor. And outside, Ander and the prosecutor, who sensed Michael is in danger, have arrived here, and they need to find their son Michael. Oh, they are late. Michael is put on a leaving submarine, and the base camp is about to explode. The prosecutor only has time to rescue Brando and Martino, and the psychologist who just got his consciousness back. On the submarine, Claw kept his promise and sends Stella on a lifeboat. Seeing that Stella is safe, Michael starts fighting back. He uses his invisibility to create confusions on the submarine, and then he takes the opportunity to jump in the lifeboat and escape with Stella. To keep Michael safe, Andrew erases everyone's memory about his superpower. No one remembers how the missing cases were solved, but the prosecutor somehow becomes the hero of the city. Michael is not as cowardly as before. He approaches Stella, and they will have a fresh start. However, the story does not end here. Just like what Claw said, Alina didn't die. In fact, she is the final boss behind everything. And Andrew didn't tell Michael all the truth. Him and Alina have two kids in Natasha, Michael's little sister, is hiding in Morocco right now, and Alina's new plan is about to begin.